All right, hello everyone. Today we continue in Matthew chapter 21. When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their coats on them, and he sat on their coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats in the road, and others were cutting branches from trees and spreading them in the road. The crowds going ahead of him, and those who followed, were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth, the Galilean. And Jesus entered the temple, and drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple, and overturned the tables of the money changers, and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priest but when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they become indignant, and said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read, Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself? And he left them, and went out to the city to Bethany, and spent the night there. Now in the morning, when he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it, and found nothing on it, except leaves only. And he said to it, No longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. Seeing this, the disciples were amazed, and asked, How did the fig tree wither all at once? And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And all the things you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came in to him, while he was teaching, and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one thing, <clears throat> which if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was from what source, from heaven or from men? And they began reasoning among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the people, for they all regard John as a prophet. And answering Jesus, they said, We do not know. He also said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in the vineyard. And he answered, I will not. But afterwards he regretted it and went. The man came to the second and said the same thing, and he answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you that the tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes did believe him. And you, seeing this, did not even feel remorse afterwards, so as to believe him. <clears throat> Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and rented it out to the vine growers and went on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce. 
The vine growers took his slaves and beat one and killed another and stoned a third. Again he sent another group of slaves larger than the first, and they did the same thing to them. But afterward he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine growers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. They took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine growers? They said to him, He will bring those wretches to a wretched inn, and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the proceeds at a proper season. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in this... Oh, crap. Of course, phone call, Michelle. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go back to uh, verse 39. They took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine growers? They said to him, He will bring those wretches to a wretched inn and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the proceeds at a proper season. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scripture the stone which the builders rejected? This became the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord, and it was marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. And he who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they understood that he was speaking about them. When they sought to seize him, they feared the people because they considered him to be a prophet. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 22 Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent out his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. Again he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fattened livestock, are all butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their way, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his slaves and mistreated them and killed them. But the king was enraged, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their cities on fire. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main highways, and as many as you find there, invite them to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, both evil and good, and the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, in the place that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees went and plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Her Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are truthful, and teach the way of God in truth, and defer to no one. For you are not partial to any. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to give a poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their malice and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used in the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And hearing this, they were amazed, and leaving him, they went away. On that day, some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him. Asking teacher Moses said, Asking, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies having no children, his brother, his next of kin, shall marry his wife and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers with us, and the first married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother. So also the second and the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had married her. But Jesus answered and said to them, 
you are mistaken, not understanding the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ, whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, Then how does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies beneath your feet. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him a word, nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him another question. Matthew chapter 23 <clears throat> Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Therefore all that they tell you, do and observe, but do not do according to their deeds, for they say things and do not do them. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them, and so much as a finger. But they do all their deeds to be noticed by men, for they burden their phylacteries and lengthen the tassels of their garments. They love the place of honor at banquets and the chief seats in the synagogues, the respectful greetings in the marketplaces, and being called rabbi by men. But do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Do not be called leader, for one is your leader, that is Christ. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people, for you do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense you make long prayers, therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the temple, that is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple is obligated. You fools and blind men, which is more important, the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, that is nothing, but whoever swears by the offering on it, he is obligated. You blind man, men, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sacrifices or sanctifies the offering? Therefore, whoever swears by the altar, swears both by the altar and by everything on it. And whoever swears by the temple, swears both by the temple and by him who dwells within it. And whoever swears by heaven swears both by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of your cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and of the dish, so that the outside of it may become clean also. 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead men's bones and uncleanliness. So you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous. And say, if we had been living in the days of our fathers, we would have not been partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measures of guilt of your fathers. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how will you escape the sentence of hell? Therefore, behold, I am sending you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, so that upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barakai, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Therefore I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation." Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her? How often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate, for I say to you, from now on you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Matthew 24 Jesus came out from the temple and was going away with his disciples came to a point out of the temple. Come to up to the point out the temple to buildings to him. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. And he was sitting on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened, for these things must take place. But that, is, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. <clears throat> But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. They will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you, and will be hated by the nations because of my name. At that time many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world, the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then to the, the end will come. <clears throat> Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get the things that are in his house. Whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. But pray that your flight will not be in the winter, or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then, if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him. <clears throat> For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance, so that if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and powers of heaven will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with the power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize he is near, right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then there will be two men in the field. One will ta be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore be on alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at the time that, of the night that the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert, and would not have allowed the house to be broken into. For this reason you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour which you do not think he will. Who then is the faithful and sensible slave, whom his master put in charge of his household, to give them their food at the proper times? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that evil slave says in his heart, My master is not coming for a long time, and begins to beat his fellow slaves and eat and drink with drunkards, the master of the slave will come on a day that he does not expect him, and at that hour which he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, and the place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. One moment. <coughs> okay. Continue. Matthew chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil and flask along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight there was a shout, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, No, there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on your alert then, for that you do not know the day nor the hour. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and gained five more. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But... He who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted me 
You entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. No seed, and I was afraid, and I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore take away the talent from him, and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to every one who has, more shall be given, and he who will have in abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness, in the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the glorious throne. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in naked and you clothed me i was sick and you visited me i was in prison and you came to me then the righteous will answer him lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty or give you something to drink and when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you when did you see you sick or in prison and come to see you the king will answer and say to them truly i say to you to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they themselves will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but righteousness into eternal life. And we will stop there and continue on to chapter 26 tomorrow sometime so that's it for today have a good one and take care